What's up everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to another Film Breakdown. My name is Max Brown. Today we'll be breaking down the USC versus Utah game. USC got the best of the Utes in Salt Lake and we'll be breaking it down today on the whiteboard. Before I get going, if you've been liking these videos, be sure to subscribe down below, give this video a like, check out some of my content on social media and uh, check out Trojansports.com as well for more breakdowns. But without further ado, let's dive into it. So the biggest thing that stuck out to me a week ago was the USC defense. For USC fans, the defense finally took that step we've kind of been waiting for. We saw the identity of what this defense is going to be. But the one specific aspect that jumped out to me is these blitz packages that Todd Orlando has been dialing up. They finally got home in week three. We saw them in the first couple of weeks, but they didn't really impact the game. So in this video, I'm going to take four different pressures throughout the game, all of which were key plays in the game. We'll look at where USC really put the pressure on Utah, maybe where Utah could have been better, where USC was great, and overall how it impacted the game. So with all that said, let's check out a play in the first quarter. USC dials up a blitz, puts the pressure on this Ute offense, and let's see how it goes. At the 20, with the playcock all the way down to two, rising pressured immediately, is going to throw toward the end zone, out of bounds, incomplete. The 20, with the playcock all the way down to two, rising pressured immediately, is going to throw toward the end zone, out of bounds, incomplete. All right, so right away, early on in the game, we see USC dial up a pressure. Good on the Trojans, third down, they get off the field, great call. To start, I'll walk through the defensive perspective. It looks like USC has a lot going on, but for an experienced quarterback, this is a very clear picture. Even with all this junk right here, it's a very clear picture because you know that the USC's in man, they have to have a body here, they have to have a body here, they have to have a body here, and they have to have a body here. So there's only so much USC can do. It's not like they have a bunch of guys moving around and it's a really complex look. They hypothetically could drop guys, and that's something you have to be wary of of a quarterback. But it's also something that you would know game plan wise walking uh, walk into the week. But, but they could drop guys. They could drop guys. But knowing the vibe of USC, I'm confident they're bringing pressure. And then there's also man right here. And so with that said, defensively, you're saying, all right, we're going we're gonna to get after this quarterback. It's his first start. Let's see what he's got. Let's see if he has the chops. Let's see if he can pass the test. So then what's, uh, what, what are, uh, what are you, Utah's answers to the test? I'll grab this pen. They're going to go outside here. A little outside sit route right at the sticks, or I guess it's even a little bit deeper, right at the sticks. This red line is the first down yardage, so you guys have a perspective on what Utah's thinking. Then they're going to go a little inside fade from the slot right there, and on this side, they're just going to go double slants, one and then two, working inside out if you're a quarterback. So right away, this is the first possession of the game. It's, it's weird to kind of think that this play could have impacted the rest of the game, but there's a reason I wanted to drive this home. This running back's also out. He had a little wheel route, which is going to force this linebacker to go this way. But the point I want to drive home is, right, Cam Rising, first start in the game, his eyes go to this side. I don't know exactly how this read is taught for him, but what I do know is on third down, when you get double slants against man, this is your answer. This right here is the winning guy right there. And he takes his eyes to the right, right? And flushes out to his own right side and throws the ball away. And it's kind of, you forget about it and move on, ah, oh, whatever, whatever. But I'm sure he's getting coached in this uh, this week. Hey, this is your winner right here. If they if, if USC clears the box and there's no one in there because linebackers running out, right here is your winner. This guy's tight on his receiver. This guy's tight on his receiver. This guy's tight on his receiver. You have a leverage win right there on Isaiah Palomao with his depth. This should have been where the ball's going. So with that in mind, let's watch the play one more time. At the 20, with the playcock all the way down to two, rising pressured immediately, is going to throw toward the end zone, out of bounds, incomplete. All right, there's one pressure, one point down. Let's check out a second pressure that Todd Orlando and this USC defense dials up later on in that first half. He'll put up, but he was the leading returning rusher for the Utes. Another sort of screen pass, and now it's intercepted. It was overthrown, and Drake Jackson just darted in there and picked it off. What a play by him. On the screen pass, you need to miss low. Hit your guy in the feet if you're not going to get it to him, but you cannot miss high. All right, big play by the USC defense. Let's check out how it happened. Utah is going to start in a 2x2 two -two formation. They're going to swoop the X receiver to the other side of the field. This guy coming from uh, over here on the far right. This F is going to look to crack Raylan Goforth as Utah's dialing up a screen. Out here, they're just going to block block and give the illusion that there's some bubble screen action from the X receiver coming from right to left. 
The R is going to block and, and, uh, and chop his feet for a little bit. And then obviously leak out into the screen here. That's the offensive mentality. The defensive mentality, it's a 4-3 structure with the, this outside linebacker being Greg Johnson. The safeties are going to rock and roll. There's a little uh, Thanksgiving dinner table uh, terminology uh, for you. Rock and roll and safeties. When a, when a receiver uh, swoops across the field, when the safeties go back and forth, they're rocking and rolling as a result. That's what USC does. Other teams sometimes run with. Not, the, not this USC team. So they're going to have Talanoa dropping back. Isaiah Palomao coming down to account for this new receiver who's now going to make this side a 3 by one formation. But what I love is... Once again, the call by Todd Orlando, the improvement of these inside linebackers and the impact they're having on this game. So what they're going to do is they're going to bring a single backer dog blitz right down here in the B gap. As a result, you always hear like, oh, let's be gap sound, B gap sound. Well, what does that mean? If you're going to bring a backer, everyone else has to adjust. You can't have two defenders in one gap. So they're going to bring the tackle inside of the A. They're going to bring Nick Figueroa on the C, what's, or outside on the C. What's notable here is he's going to leak out with this, uh, with this swing or this swoop from this X receiver. So he actually doesn't even rush the passer, so you kind of waste this left tackle block. That's just kind of a little tidbit there. You're also going to swing back Marlin into this B gap, and then Drake technically has the C, but as we are going to point out, the ability for him to drop into coverage is very important and makes this play. The point I want to highlight is, right, USC's identity is blitzing. They're all about blitzing. You're not sure exactly what you're going to get, especially on later third down, third down uh, type plays. But the point I want to drive home is with the more experienced quarterback, once again, hate to, hate to rag on Cam Rising, but it's a good teaching point. One thing that my uh, old quarterback coach taught me, Marcus Tuiasa Sopo, back in 2015, is when you get pressure from this side, when you get pressure from one side, be very wary of a nine technique or an outside end technique of him dropping, especially the case when it's 99, especially the case when it's Drake Jackson, because this is a great call, call by Todd Orlando. You want to run screens into pressure. You want guys to come. You, got, you want guys to rush the passer. You do not want this. You do not want guys to drop back into coverage. And that's exactly what USC does, a very timely call. But the point I want to drive home is as a quarterback, if you see pressure this side, you should feel that, hey, it's going to get soft on this side, right? Because if pressure comes from one side, the defense has to counter on the other side. That's like next level quarterback play. I would not expect a guy in his first start to realize that. But I would expect, hey, a senior, a redshirt senior, to feel those type of things and be very wary of a dropping end to not sail the throw. This is nitpicking it a lot. This is just an errant throw. Um, if this is a more accurate throw, it's not a pick, and we're, we're, we're not even talking about this play. But it's a good teaching tape of, hey, USC is going to bring pressure. They're going to bring single backer dogs. All right, how does that impact the rest of the defense? You get Drake Jackson, which is an absolute luxury having an elite pass rusher, where if you're Utah, you have to account for him every single play, yet he's no slouch if he drops into coverage right there, as we saw able to uh, intercept the, the football there. So great play by Drake Jackson, a poor throw right there. But for you guys trying to uh, up your, your football knowledge, it's, it's, it's fun to talk about. If you bring a backer on this side, be very wary of an end dropping in coverage, right? Everything's rolling this way here. You gotta counter it by kind of rolling back here to make sure all your areas on the field are covered. We've seen two pressures. Let's check out a third. His career started true freshman. They think he's gonna be really good too. Play fake and Bentley pressured, got away from Jake Drake Jackson. He's going deep. That one hanging in the air for a long time and it's intercepted. All right, so when we look at this next play, it's a great play by Drake Jackson. Just looked like a big-time player making a big-time play. But when you dive deeper, it's a very fascinating cat-and-mouse game between the offensive coordinator and the defensive coordinator, Todd Orlando. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. So Utah comes out with a two-tight end picture, the Y here, the F here. If you're USC, if you're Todd Orlando, you're saying, crap, this is Utah. You've got two tight ends right here. They're going to be running to the right. If that's, that's how I would think about it. You have no film on the Utes, but with this heavy two tight end here, I would think, hey, look, they're going to be running strong. On the other side, Utah might be thinking, hey, let's run weak. Let's run weak, as we saw with that play fake. But what does USC do? 
they decide to slide their defensive line to the defensive line's left, the offensive line's right. Why would you do something like that? To help protect against the run. I don't know exactly if that's the why they did that, but from a football mind, that would make a lot of sense. You have two tight ends here, you're trying to slide your defensive line, slide your big boys to help out against this. Oh, by the way, you have two linebackers that the first couple weeks have struggled at staying gap sound at certain points in the game. So let's put that gap uh, integrity on the defensive line, allow your linebackers to flow, and this is just sound defensive football, right? You're sliding towards where you might be outmanned out here. What's interesting, though, is Utah elects to play fake. That's eh, a poor drawing. Yeah, le elects to, to play fake and throw a play action uh, deep over here. As a result of this play fake, their offensive line, everyone's taking a step this direction, to the left, to the left. That goes against what USC's doing, hence why this play is able to be made. Let me get my, next play, uh, my other pen. Drake Jackson right here. Left tackle step into his left, Drake step into the offensive tackle's right, he's able to slide in this hole right here. If Utah would have just ran weak zone instead, they would have had great leverage, right? Because you had all the SC defenders kind of working this way. You had Utah's uh, offensive line working the other way. You would have been out leveraged, can go man, man, man on man here. And that would have been a great call. You would have caught USC in a very tough spot. But, hey, Todd Orlando is not afraid to, uh, to mix things up, risk it a little bit. He slides his defensive line this way and then brings... Kanai Malga this way. That's the extra guy who's filling this gap. But because of that movement, it allows Drake Jackson to shuffle his feet a little bit, step inside, use this offensive tackle's leverage to his benefit, and, uh, and really make a big time play. I didn't draw the route concept because you can't really tell from the uh, TV copy what's going on, but it's probably something like uh, a deep V and then an out, and they, they're kind of high low and uh, Elijah Griffin this way but it's a quarterback obviously the interception is on him but it's caused by a lot of this pressure and a lot of this mindset from Todd Orlando the skill of Drake Jackson and kind of that cat and mouse game between offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator they get the ball snapped on fourth and four pressure comes over the top and that one is going to be almost intercepted it didn't matter it's incomplete USC turns it over on down they get the ball snapped on fourth and four. Pressure comes over the top, and that one is going to be almost intercepted. It didn't matter. It's incomplete. All right, lot to unpack on this one. Let's start with the scenario in the game, because this ends up being the most important play thus far. I guess those picks were important, but hey, fourth quarter, late in the game, got to have it. This play was crucial. USC's up 30-17, to two-score game. It's fourth and four, ball in the 10-yard line. Utah elects to go for the touchdown rather than the field goal. 9-16 left in the fourth. Let's start with the defensive side of the ball. What does Todd Orlando do? Once again, he's going man coverage. He's trusting his secondary. He's going to bring pressure after this quarterback and test this quarterback. Does this quarterback have the answers to the test? Can he function? Moving forward, if I'm playing USC on third and fourth down, I'm having heavy man answers. I know Todd Orlando is coming out after me heavy heavy man answers and I'm also studying film on 99 and 31 I got to know when they're coming when they're rushing versus when they're dropping and as USC fans we give Drake Jackson a lot of credit don't forget about Hunter Eccles it's a luxury to have two defensive end linebacker type bodies that can both rush the passer and drop back in coverage and you don't have to worry about whether they can hold up in either defensively USC is going man coverage man on man here Man on man here, Talanoa Hufunga has this guy going vertical. He's gonna work this way, change the color. He's gonna work this way. And then this guy right here, Raylan Goforth, he's the big, the big kind of X factor in this one because offensively, anytime you put four out to a side, you'll hear that terminology a lot in red zone, four out to a side, four out to a side. What does that mean? That means one, two, three, four guys are running, a, running their route to one side of the field. That is very hard on the defense because usually the defense has to bring someone over from this side to the other side to account for four guys going out to one side. USC's, this is, no, uh, this is nothing new to USC, so they're adjusting, they're bringing their middle linebacker this way. Side note, if I'm game planning against USC, you gotta know where Kanai Malga is all the time because they like bringing 26 
a lot more than 10 in pressure scenarios. They like his ability to rush the running back, get under the running back's pads, and create pressure there. So defensively, that's their mindset. They're going to trust Chris Steele, man coverage on this side, and, and trust that he can hold up. Offensively, here's the approach if you're Jake Bentley. If you like this matchup, take it. Take it all day. If this is a, if this is a big time receiver, you can take this all day. He does not. If you're going to read this side, especially if USC's bringing pressure, this is your first progression. If the Z were to win and Elijah Griffin gets held up in this junk at all, if the Z were to win right away, get him the ball, get your five yards, see if he can run after the catch and move on. Credit an experienced corner right there at Elijah Griffin for not allowing that to happen. He gets under all this junk over here and, and, and runs with the Z receiver the whole time. From there, if I'm Jake Bentley, I'm working this progression, this flood concept. Couple things to note, with the Y and the F, this takes way too long for me. This takes way too long. It's fourth and four. You know Todd Orlando is gonna come and bring you pressure. It takes way too long for the Y to get out of his break. The F, it's a great option if you have time, right? I mean, I got no issues there. It just takes forever and you allow a deep safety to cover you and you just don't have the protection to get this ball out. So that's out the window, but that's fine. From there, the winner right here is the R. Your two hot routes in this scenario are like an alert right here, a hot route by the Z coming underneath. If he's covered, your next hot route is the R. And right here is a quarterback football pet peeve of mine. When I played, I hated arrow routes by the running back. Arrow being right here. Versus some offensive coordinators, some offensive minds do bubbles right here. The arrow puts more pressure on the defense, I guess you could say. But it is way harder to throw hot. This is something as I got older in my career, I would tell my offensive coordinator, hey, give me a bubble. What do you want? Do you want an arrow or a bubble? Always give me the bubble because this play is stopped because Bentley's getting pressure, but this running back's eyes can't get back to the ball because he's got to get through all this junk and then get his eyes around. Versus if you did a bubble right here by the back, it still puts pressure on go forth, but it's a much easier throw. You can just dump it to the outside and the reality is I'm taking my money, this running back in open space on a one-on-one -on -one drill against a middle linebacker just to get five yards. I'm putting my money on Utah there. But if you're going to call this, if you're the running back, you've got to get your eyes behind. You've got to get your eyes back, help out your quarterback, or this is exactly going to happen. This is where the ball should go. It's a good decision by Bentley. It's just your hot answers aren't there. And once again, you're kind of seeing a little bit of uh, maybe some week one mistakes. And if you got Utah later in the season, that might not happen. The other thing I want to uh, touch on is the protection. This is ultimately what puts Bentley in a very tough spot. Utah miscommunicates up front. Yes, it's a good pass rush by USC, but it's more poor pass protection by, uh, by Utah. What do they do? Everything starts with the center. So I'll, I'll pretend that the center is right. He makes a call to slide to his left, which means he is going to pick up Figueroa, the end, and then he's saying, hey, I got two guys on the line. I know they're both linebackers. I'm sure they're counting Drake as a defensive end, but left guard, I want you to slide out to, the, uh, to Kanai, and left tackle, I want you to slide out to Drake Jackson. The other side, that means right guard, you got a tough responsibility. You got to step heavy down and get Marlon Tui Pelotu, and right tackle, you got to step down and get Brandon Peely. That means that if you're the quarterback, you would be hot off this boundary defensive end or linebacker, however they are identifying him, and Hunter Eccles. That's one way to do it. Based on how the center slid, that's how I see the protection breaking down. In hindsight, this is how this is how I would protect it. I would I would have uh, man on man right here. I would go man on man right here, man on man right here. I would have left guard slide for Nick Figueroa. I would have a left tackle kick step wide and take the inside most lethal defender. And if they both come, you take Kanai, and then the quarterback is hot off Drake Jackson, and that's the quarterback's responsibility, and that's why you have your hot answers here and here, and we've talked about this arrow route. That doesn't happen. There's miscommunication, both the center and the left guard Go for Nick Figueroa, the right guard steps out, they block here, right tackle steps out right here, you're good on this side, but the man that goes scot-free, unblocked, is Marlon Tui Pelotu, the best defensive lineman in the conference, does not get touched by Utah, and that's not normally what they do, and with a goofy offseason, this only being week one, 
I blame this on week one mistakes that USC is taking advantage of that you might not get out of Utah later on the season. Or no, Utah will sure this up as the season goes on. Credit USC. Once again, there's a lot of things going on, right? We just talked about the pressure, the coverage, the hot answers, everything the quarterback's processing. That's what pressure does, right? All It's, a, it's an 11-man game. All it takes is one guy to mess up and your pressure is one. You don't have to be perfect every single time. When you come to the park with blitzes, these communication errors will happen. Credit Todd Orlando for trusting his defense late in the game. So there you have it. We checked out four blitzes by this USC defense. We've seen a lot of blitzes through three weeks. This game, they finally got home. Credit Todd Orlando. Credit this defense for growing, finding their roles, finding their niche, being disciplined and gap sound with some of those blitzes. And we also saw where maybe some of these week one mistakes or week one little nuances were catching up with the Utes uh, this past Saturday. But if you like this video, be sure to uh, give it a like below. Would mean a lot if you uh, hit the subscribe button as well, but we'll be back. Uh, if USC's playing this week, we'll be back for more breakdowns moving forward. But I appreciate you guys checking it out, and I'll see you next time.